I teach dance. I teach uh, modern dance primarily. I teach kinesiology. I teach Pilates. I teach a vertical dance class and we do vertical dance performances. I'm also very interested in history. But I'm talking today about my work with biomechanics. I've always felt that there is a culture in this university, but particularly in the College of Arts and Sciences, of collaborating, of getting to know someone else's work and finding the places where we have common interests. And I can take my experience and skills and intuition and questions from dance and try and apply those to um, my pursuits in science. Now at the University of Wyoming in kinesiology and health, looking at the science of motion, the mechanics of motion, and my teaching has been enhanced by this because I can look at movement analytically with the assistance of uh, ground reaction force, motion capture, EMG, and I'm able to better understand what I see with my dance teacher eye from a more scientific perspective. My interactions with biomechanics and biomechanics research has changed my teaching in a number of ways. To, to give you an example, with the movement Grand Ronde de Jamon Lair, the dancer is asked to bring their leg up to the front and carry it around to the side and take it all the way around to the back. And when I was taught, I interpreted what the teacher said as to not move the hips at all. And in my research project, I compared skilled dancers to non-skilled dancers with the assumption that the non-skilled dancers would move their pelvis more. They'd have to actually hike their hip to get their leg up to that height. And what I actually found was the more skilled dancers used their hip to move the leg because we know from basic anatomical information that you can only lift the leg so high without the pelvis responding to that. What's so interesting is when you go from the, the side around to the back, how yeah. much the hip has to move to allow the leg to go. But with a more skilled dancer, you don't see that in their body as much because they maintain that vertical orientation. How I coach a dancer now is to let the hips follow the leg rather than lifting the hip to bring the leg into extension. And it's made me think through the language that I use very carefully because if I say it's okay to move your hips, the dancers might overreact to that. So I have, have tried to filter this information from the research into a more practical application in the classroom. We can also look at how a dancer deals with gravity. So in the Grand Ronde de Jam study that we do with the dancer on the ground, she has to lift her leg and carry it, and gravity is definitely pressing down on the leg. When a dancer is hang in a harness and hanging upside down, so gravity is actually assisting that range of motion. And I think that future studies could look at quantifying the um, movement of the leg relative to the relationship of gravity, but also how that affects the hips. I am very involved in an organization called the International Association for Dance Medicine and Science. It is a group of physicians, orthopedics, uh, family practice doctors, physical therapists, athletic trainers, um, dancers, choreographers, company directors, all who are very interested in the health and well-being of dancers. And I, I see my research as having two lives, one of which is I feel like I'm contributing to the science of, of understanding dance, but at the same time it comes back in a very personal level and I'm able to share that information with my students in terms of training, but we also have students who are majoring um, in dance with a focus in dance science, and so they can be part of, of my research as well. So it, it sort of folds in and out on uh, international level and on a very local level. I feel, just feel very fortunate that I have this balance in my life. I have um, a wonderful uh, position where I get to do what I love to do. And I'm proud to bring the science to the dance.